might seem cute, helpless, and charmingly innocent. Or they can look fierce, weird, and downright creepy. In the world of extreme animals, meet the babies. The babies on this countdown have to grow up fast in a land of extremes. These infants face fire and flood and some of the deadliest creatures on the planet. Meet the Aussie Battlers and get ready for a roll call of the fiercest, feistiest babies in Australia. inhabited continent on Earth has produced some of the world's strangest creatures. Many of them found nowhere else on the planet. It takes a special kind of creature to flourish here. And no one does it better than Australia's icon, the kangaroo. The vast distances of the outback and no walk in the park. But kangaroos solve that by deciding that hopping isn't just for the birds. The only large mammal with its own inbuilt pogo stick can reach speeds of over 50 kilometers per hour. Some find getting all that leg action under control a little more challenging than others. Fortunately, Mum is usually on hand for a hug. Baby kangaroos, known as joeys, form a strong bond with Mum. This marsupial matriarch is sleeping bag, comfort blanket, and live-in diner all in one. Joey's first experience of the outside world is mountaineering up Mum's stomach, desperate to get back inside. When ejected from the womb, the jelly bean sized Joey is at the same stage of development as a seven week old human embryo. Once the infant makes it to the pouch, it latches on to one of Mum's four nipples and doesn't let go for the next 10 weeks while it grows into something that actually looks like a kangaroo. there's no chance of getting this kid to tidy up its room. So when things start to get a little high, Mum cleans out the waste herself. You can't beat breakfast in bed, even when home can get a little cramped. It's a good six months before Junior will leave the security of the pouch for the first time. And it's back inside whenever Mum will let it. The versatile pouch is crucial to the kangaroo's success. Mum holds the keys to the pouch. She can open it or zip it shut. And this gives her much more control over her pregnancy than most animals get. If times get really tough, she can kick out the still developing baby to save herself. And with a climate that can put swimming lessons on the agenda one month and threaten to barbecue the kids the next, this isn't a landscape to take for granted. The harsh conditions of Outback Australia lead to some difficult choices. Adult kangaroos can survive for up to two weeks without a drink. Prolonged droughts takes its toll. Joeys are more vulnerable to heat and hunger than adults, which makes them a liability when the chips are down. This mum has decided to save her strength and cut off the milk supply. 
which means this little kangaroo isn't going to make its first birthday. But there's always a silver lining for someone. So, for bouncing in and out of Mum's good books, kangaroo kids spring into number 10 on the Aussie Battlers countdown. Living in one of the driest continents on Earth presents its challenges to a bird that loves the water. The magpie goose avoids Australia's arid center, sticking mostly to coastal areas in the north and east. This sociable water bird spreads out in flocks of thousands to stake out nesting sites towards the end of the wet season. Food may be more plentiful with more water around. But you can have too much of a good thing. And some babies' battles are over before they begin. It's not just the weather that means even making it out of the egg can be a challenge. Dingoes always have an eye out for the main chance. An egg does have the advantage of keeping the kids quiet. Which means these noisier kukul chicks are getting this dingo's attention. The kukul parent hops it, and the chicks stop their clamor for food. The lush vegetation helps conceal the nest. But at the goose nest, there's no protection from a snake in the grass. This is probably not the best time to make your entrance into the world. Mum and Dad do their best to distract the water python. And their display succeeds in driving it away. Just in time to welcome the newest family members into a world that, just for the moment, isn't trying to eat them. These chicks get an extra helping hand in life. Magpie geese often form long-term polygamous relationships of a male and two females. The eggs in the family nest could be laid by either or both of the females. So these babies are growing up with a dad and two mums. Growing up in Australia means maneuvering in a minefield of beaks, claws, and teeth. So having an extra parent can swing the odds in your favor. A sea eagle isn't going to tackle an adult bird, but chicks are just snack-sized. Three parents can form a serious defensive shield. But it's harder when there's just the two of you. It's never easy to let go. But this chick is a lost cause. The adults are constantly on guard. But a peaceful billabong can erupt in a moment. Seeing mum munched in front of you is a lesson you won't forget. So, for embracing safety in numbers is the family motto, magpie geese chicks honk into number nine on the Extreme Animals Countdown. Eucalyptus trees dominate much of the Australian landscape. 
The high level of toxins in their leaves make them unappetizing to most creatures. But there's one animal that spends its life up a gum tree. The koala has developed a unique digestive system, which means it can dine without leaving home. It has an extremely large intestine for its size and an abundance of gut bacteria to counteract the toxins in its food. I'm in the mood. Oh. Feed me, feed me, feed me till I am fit to burst. So much energy is expended on this high fiber, low protein diet that koalas don't have much left over for anything else. Eighty percent of their lives is spent in dream time. In fact, every minute of wide awake action requires four minutes of snoozing to recover. Although, when you're up a gum tree, it's best to hold on tight. A bit of Pilates helps keep things cool in the heat of the day. But let's not get too carried away. Like kangaroos, koala babies start life in a pouch, but there's a difference. The opening to this pouch faces downwards, so mum has to exercise her sphincter muscles to keep the baby from plummeting to its death. But there's a good reason for this apparent design flaw, which might put you off your dinner. Infant koalas have to be eased into eating their toxic solids and mum's bum produces a half-digested version, packed with helpful bacteria that will kick-start the baby's own digestive system. This yogurty treat entices the six-month-old Joey to make its first excursions outside the pouch and have a go at the adult's table. Although mum's milk will still be on offer for another six months. Getting back home can be a bit tricky with no help from mum and a 10-meter drop below. That's got to the bottom of it. For putting up with the worst baby food ever and a death-defying iron grip, baby koalas are the number eight Aussie battlers. The countdown is just warming up, and so are the next babies who've had to adapt to life in the desert. Bouncing babies reluctant to leave home took out number 10. Baby geese on a flight to nowhere squawked into number 9. And disgusting dining from koala kids at number 8. They might have been here for over 3,000 years. But that still makes dingoes relatively recent arrivals on the Australian scene. descendant of the Asian wolf. These canine conquistadors quickly made themselves at home in the challenging Australian landscape. Strong family bonds are a key to their success. Dingoes often mate for life, producing litters of from one to 10 cubs once a year and sharing childcare in stable packs of up to 12 individuals. A strict hierarchy and strong pack discipline make for a winning strategy. And dingo pups spend a lot of energy play fighting to sort out who's top dog. These kids are all pups of the pack's dominant pair. They have no other playmates because mum has brutally dispatched any pups born to subordinate females. So, you really don't want to get on the wrong side of a dingo mum. The dingo's other great tactic for success has been its willingness to try to eat almost anything. 
and a refusal to recognize its limitations. Dingo barbs come equipped with a can-do attitude. It's not always a good idea to stick your head in a strange hole. But this pub is doing everyone a favor by reducing Australia's pesky rabbit menace, one bunny at a time. Might want to work on the focus, though. Learning when to persist and when to back off is an essential skill in a land with some of the most dangerous animals in the world. Luckily for this inquisitive pub, it's annoying a harmless shingleback skink. Well, almost harmless. For their strict upbringing and willingness to stick their noses in anywhere, Dingo Pops are the number seven Aussie battler. The next battling babe is also an Aussie immigrant. This extreme animal is uniquely designed to survive in desert conditions. Introduced in 1840 as beasts of burden, camels made themselves so at home here that the outback now boasts the world's largest herd of feral camels. Up to a million roam Australia's red center. Camels can survive without water for days. Although when given the chance, they can vacuum up as much as 200 liters in less than 20 minutes. Once they figured out how to actually reach it. Adults can weigh in at up to 600 kilos. So you don't want to get stuck between two of the aunties. Unlike the native marsupials, who keep womb time to a minimum, a camel fetus gets more than a year of gestation. Which means that mum has to push out up to 50 kilos of fully formed baby. After a year curled up inside, getting control of all those long legs is no mean feat. When they're more or less under control, those long legs help the baby deal with extreme heat by keeping the rest of its body as far away as possible from the hot ground. Only a few days after birth, it's time to go in search of a mum and toddler support group. Females with babies hang out together under the protection of an alpha bull. And this is what they need protection from. Gangs of unattached males roam the desert looking for trouble. And a lone female is just what the boys are after. The gang move in on mum. But one big bully finds an easier target. And starts beating on the baby. Males can attack and kill young calves. And that's not a friendly hug. But it's mum to the rescue. The baby may be bruised and battered, but this little Aussie battler is made of tough stuff. For surviving the desert while being used as a doormat, Camel calves are a well-earned number six in the countdown of extreme animal babies. We've seen babies baking in the harsh Australian interior. Next, a watery wonder world. It's been ruthless, death-defying, and brutal. In the first half of the countdown to the number one baby Aussie battler.
Australia's coastline is home to an extraordinary variety of colourful sea life. The sometimes charming, sometimes wacky and weird inhabitants include some of the most dangerous animals on the planet. You wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of this little guy. The tiny blue-ringed octopus packs enough poison in its golf ball-sized body to take out over 20 people. If it was in a really bad mood. The extravagant outfits of some residents may seem to be shouting, Look at me! Ta-da! But they're actually pretty effective camouflage. If these pieces of drifting seaweed didn't have eyes, they'd be a dead ringer for the real thing. By the way, the head's at the bottom. Sea dragons float around like fairy tale creatures, raising the tone of the neighborhood with their ethereal beauty. While their cousins, the seahorses, indulge in a little canoodling in public. The big belly seahorse is big all over for a seahorse, reaching over 30 centimeters long. And this male is proudly showing off his defining feature. The date is going well, and his belly will soon be performing a very unusual function. In seahorses, it's dad who gets pregnant. During the mating, the female transfers her eggs into his pouch, where they'll be fertilized and grow, in a placental fluid, just like in a womb. After about 30 days, Dad goes into labor, and out pop perfectly formed baby seahorses. Lots of them. Dad can produce up to 700 at a time. With the babies gone, Dad feels a new lightness of being and doesn't seem too keen to rush straight back into fatherhood. He's still thinking of his belly, but this time, it's more about what he can put in it. He might have no teeth, but he's got an awesome suck when he needs it. Like many fish, he has no stomach. And the hapless shrimp is about to hit the fast lane through the seahorse's internal plumbing. Meanwhile, the offspring are learning to get their tails under control to hang on to anything they can reach. Stormy weather and strong currents can sweep them away, so finding an anchor is an important skill. Some choices are better than others. This way. Oh, this way. Lots of these babies won't make it to have big bellies of their own. But their cozy start in life and comfort in numbers take seahorse babies out of the running for the Aussie Battlers countdown. The baking arid center of Australia may never see a snowflake. But off the southeast coast, the island of Tasmania gets an icy frosting in winter. This baby quoll may look as cute as a button, but mum is a fearsome hunter, and she's off looking for supplies, leaving her nine-week-old babes in the den. It's only a week since these marsupial babes left mum's pouch, and they're not used to being alone. The quoll's sharp eyes have spotted movement. It's this waddling wombat, a harmless vegetarian. But this is too much of a challenge, even for this ferocious carnivore. The wombat could outweigh her by over 30 kilos. And speaking of weight, A pigeon makes a more manageable snack for this tiger quoll. Wow. 
These ruthless hunters start life with a remarkably effective lesson in survival of the fittest. After only three weeks gestation, mum gives birth to as many as 30 barely formed tiny offspring. Which is nature's practical joke. Because she only has a maximum of eight nipples. If you're not first in the queue, well, the joke's on you. And life's over before it begins. Saying, I could just eat you all up to the kids is usually a term of endearment. But Mama Qual's motto is, waste not, one not. Once she's disposed of the evidence of mass infanticide, she couldn't be a more attentive mum. When a passing tiger snake fancies a meal of baby quoll, mum bars the way. Even this venomous predator recognizes when not to argue with a protective parent. Five months later, baby quolls are using the forest as their playground, as they try out their moves on each other and practice a stealthy approach. Yeah, need some work. But these infants are still mummy's boys and girls. Everyone's along for the ride, even when mum's off hunting. And amazingly, she not only puts up with the clingiest babies in town, she even still manages to bring home the dinner. For starting life in a race to the death and scoring the most patient mum on the planet, baby quolls are the number five Aussie battler. The next babies go independent from the get-go. Stuffing their faces is their survival strategy. So far, the countdown has seen Aussie battlers clinging to mum, popping out of dad, and squashed by random strangers. This is not a land for the faint-hearted. The Australian environment has nurtured some of the world's deadliest animals, including the world's most venomous land snakes, the taipans. The coastal taipan is known for its long fangs and speedy reactions. This cold-blooded reptile is a fussy eater. and prefers its food to be warm. At least when alive. Its venom is a specialized neurotoxin, quickly lethal to the small mammals and birds that form the snake's diet. Fortunately, it's also extremely shy. So despite packing enough poison to potentially kill a human within 30 minutes, Human casualties are low. Adult taipans are amongst the largest of Australia's venomous snakes. And males can grow to three meters. But they start life at a less intimidating 46 centimeters. And with a goanna on the prowl, this youngster is wise to keep out of sight. There's no sentimentality in Snake World. This babe was on its own from the moment it left its cozy eggshell. It's born with the instincts it needs to hunt. and it's already armed with more than enough venom to take down a fully grown rat. You can't fault the Taipan tot for its ambition. But without cutlery, dinner has to go down in one lump.
Yep. Definitely a case of eyes bigger than stomach. Even its incredibly stretchable jaw isn't going to help turn this rat into ratatouille. But the unlucky rodent wasn't living alone. And the baby Taipan gets a whiff of something more promising. It already has the acutely keen sense of smell that enables these snakes to keep track of prey. These blind and hairless baby rats might as well be sugar mice for all the defenses they have against an infant Taipan. Nothing is wasted at this all-you-can-eat buffet. And within a year, this baby will be swallowing the big boys. So, for its fearsome fangs and a gung-ho attitude, the baby Taipan gobs its way to number four on the Extreme Animals Aussie Battlers Countdown. The warm waters round the Australian coast are home to the next pugnacious infant. Sand tiger sharks can grow to over three meters long. Females outweigh the males, and it takes a bountiful supply of seafood to sustain her voracious appetite. These sharks have a fearsome reputation, largely due to their extremely impressive set of gnashes. Humans may not be on the menu, but this is definitely a fish to treat with respect. Before they're even born, baby sand tiger sharks get a startlingly pragmatic introduction to the fish-eat-fish -fish world out there. Fertilized eggs develop and begin to hatch inside the paired uteri. But there's no play fighting in this kindergarten. One baby in each uterus takes advantage of its head start by snacking on its siblings. The more it eats, the more it grows. And when there are no other hatchlings to chew, it devours the eggs. Eventually, there can be only one, or in this case, one in each uterus. For spitting in the eye of family ties and starting life with a stomach full of sibling, sand tiger sharks are the number three Aussie battler extreme baby. With only two still to go on the countdown, competition is only getting fiercer as we get closer to revealing the number one Aussie battler. From icy wonderland to burning desert, negotiating Australia's landscape and fierce climate is every little Aussie's first challenge. The next extreme animal baby prefers a coastal outlook. Flying foxes live around the north and east edges of the continent. The rich pickings of tropical fruits and foliage sustain one of the world's largest bats. With a wingspan that can grow to over a meter. And when not on the wing, like all bats, they take a rush of blood to the head while viewing the world from a different perspective. Babies are born in summer camps that can number many thousands. And mum sees no reason to give up her usual viewpoint, just because she's giving birth. There's just one problem with this scenario. You've got to hope mum's paying attention when you finally pop out because there are no second chances if she misses this catch. How's that? The baby bat will go everywhere with mum for the next four weeks. With nipples in her armpits, it doesn't pay to be ticklish. It's completely dependent on her to keep it safe from all the hungry mouths eager for a succulent bat snack. Snakes and even goannas are always on the lookout for a bit of high tea.
hanging out on thin branches over the billabong might have seemed like a good idea for foiling predatory tree climbing lizards. But this could be a case of out of the frying pan. There are some things a baby bat just shouldn't see. They may have a hair-raising entry to the world, but their super protective mum means baby bats don't make the countdown. They don't come any tougher than the next Aussie battler. And when fully grown, they don't come much bigger. The saltwater crocodile can grow to be almost seven meters of armored killing machine and is one of Australia's most dangerous animals. This super predator regards virtually any animal in its territory as fair game. Frequenting coastal regions in the north of Australia, adult salties move easily between salt and fresh water. But the babies start life with a little less seasoning. When Mother Croc starts feeling broody, she seeks out fresh water. Females may be less than half the size of the males, but they still live life on a big scale. Building nests of over two meters long, she has to get the mix exactly right. This giant pile of vegetation generates heat as it decomposes. And if it's too volatile or doesn't protect them from the elements, her eggs could be poached. While mum sits guarding her compost fueled incubator, the exact temperature is controlling the gender of the hatchlings. A constant balmy 31 to 33 degrees produces boy babies, while girls are much less fussy, forming at both warmer and cooler temperatures. As soon as the babies are hatching, they start calling for their mum, who digs them out. Before Junior can ask for a hug, he gets an inside view of the world's most powerful jaws. Keeping very still is sensible, but she's just giving him a lift to the water. Not everyone is keen for a ride. But this is one mother you really don't argue with. You'd think being the offspring of the country's apex predator would swing the odds in your favor. But only one in a hundred of these tiny terrors is likely to make it to maturity. And while it's easy to laugh in the face of danger while mum's around, it's a big mistake to forget that you're not the scary one. Chilling in the billabong works for the grown-ups, but for bite-sized babies, being lulled into a false sense of security can be fatal. And if the neighbors don't get you, the climate might. In times of drought, you don't want to be a stick in the mud. This adventurous baby isn't going to stick around to be a sun-dried hors d'oeuvre. Leaving home when you don't know where you're going is a brave move. But this feisty little fellow has decided that fortune favors the bold. And even at this age, no one's standing in his way. just when this wallaby thought it was safe staying out of the water.
Even this confident croc knows a wallaby steak is just a distant daydream. For now. Neither fire nor torrential rain can stop this battling babe. And after what could have been a journey of over 20 kilometers, a fast-flowing river offers a new home. With ensuite dining, for their hardcore attitude and punching above their weight, saltwater crocodile babies are a snap for number two on the countdown of Aussie battlers. Next, meet the supreme battling Aussie infant. The countdown of extreme animal babies of Oz saw Joey's bouncing into number 10. Goslings were on everyone's menu at number nine, while koala kids on cleanup duty slurped into number eight. Dingo pups went nose first into number seven. And camel calves were given the boot at number six. Cute quoll kittens piled into number five. While number four was swallowed whole by baby taipans. Number three saw gruesome goings on inside the womb. And a giant attitude from a tiny infant put the saltwater crocodile babies at number two. Tasmania is the last remaining refuge of the number one Aussie battler. This extreme baby arrives trailing a fearsome reputation. Which it didn't get by skipping happily through a sunlit meadow. Now that's more like it. The Tasmanian Devil is the largest carnivorous marsupial and possibly the noisiest. And no one better get between these cantankerous beasts and their dinner. Hunters and scavengers, they'll eat almost anything that used to have a pulse. And given the chance, can eat almost half their body weight in 30 minutes. This apparently peacefully napping wombat is just the wrapping on a devil dinner. The Tasmanian Devil invented Fight Club as a way of life. A good few rounds counts as courtship. She's unlikely to be keen on a second date. Like their nearest relatives, the Qualls, Tasmanian devils take a survival of the fastest approach to giving birth. She produces up to 40 tiny embryonic babies no bigger than a raisin, who emerge into a life and death race for a victor's place at one of her four nipples. Having a bad hair day can be fatal. There are no second sittings for latecomers and no one's giving up their place at this table. Once inside, the babies will stay clamped onto their feeding stations for the next 14 weeks as they slowly develop into recognizable little devils. At 15 weeks, they leave the pouch and practice running rings around mum. The baby's teeth will soon be coming through, but they'll still be suckling for another two and a half months. And even this is tackled with their trademark ferocity. Ouch!
by six months old. The siblings are venturing a little way outside the den to play and explore. Play fighting keeps the infants out of trouble and lets them practice the moves they'll use in earnest as adults. Well, maybe not this one. Affectionate licking doesn't really seem to be in the repertoire of your fully grown devil. Tasmanian devil mums are surprisingly patient with their extremely demanding offspring. She grooms them, provides an on-demand taxi service, and does the shopping for dinner. It's no wonder she needs a snooze. But everyone has their breaking point. And mealtimes are a magnet for family drama. Mum tries to grab a quiet bite. But at 10 months, her son is old enough to challenge her for the kill. And now he's growing up, he doesn't want to share. Mum's had enough and leaves the kids to sort themselves out. Outnumbered by her three brothers, girl power doesn't get much of a look in here. It's going to be every little devil for itself from now on. So, for being the noisiest, most argumentative extreme baby, Tasmanian devils screech into number one on the countdown of Aussie battlers. Away from the family, this young female can't believe her luck. A whole wallaby all to herself. The appearance of a large male twice her size should send her packing. But this brave youngster isn't giving up without a fight. That's one seriously sassy baby devil. Even if her full threat display does have about as much impact as a gnat. <laughs> 